Think of Berkshire Hathaway, and Warren Buffett instantly comes to mind. But there's another genius, not as commonly uttered as Warren Buffett, but equally brilliant, behind this investment empire, a man whose story is shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Visionary, legendary, a first-grade thinker. These are some of the words used to describe the man who the Oracle of Omaha himself referred to as his right hand, and how did he shape one of the world's most successful companies. Today, we're unveiling the story of Charlie Munger. As the strategic mastermind behind Berkshire Hathaway, with an estimated market capitalization of over $780 billion as of November 2023, Munger has shaped the fortunes of countless investors and altered the investment landscape forever, all behind the scenes. On November 28, 2023, billionaire Charlie Munger, who served as Buffett's closest business partner and right-hand man for more than 40 years, passed away at the age of 99. How did a simple boy from Omaha become a titan in finance? And what are the hidden philosophies that powered his ascent? Stay tuned as we explore how Munger went from an unremarkable country boy to becoming one of the greatest investors in the world and how his philosophies continue to resonate in the corridors of global finance. This is the story of Charlie Munger, the mastermind behind Berkshire Hathaway. Born in 1924, Charlie Munger grew up in a middle-class family in Omaha, Nebraska, during the Roaring Twenties. His path to greatness wasn't immediately apparent. His granddad was a federal judge, and his dad was a lawyer. Even as a kid, Munger knew that to make money, you have to offer something valuable. The Great Depression disrupted his happy childhood. To help his family financially, everyone had to work, including young Charlie. He found a job at Buffett's family grocery store, working 12 hours a day for $2. During this time, he developed a strong work ethic and learned to value money. But what could a grocery store teach a future billionaire? And how did these early experiences shape the mind of a man who would one day be a titan of investment, starting his work in the Great Depression? At the age of 10, Charlie already knew what he wanted to be, a stockbroker. This desire initially drove Munger to study mathematics at the University of Michigan. However, life had other plans. The attack on Pearl Harbor led many young men to leave college for military service. At age 19, as World War II was at its peak, Munger's journey took an unexpected detour into the U.S. Army Air Corps. In the military, his high IQ was recognized, and he was assigned to work as a meteorologist at Caltech in Pasadena, California, a city that would later become an integral part of his life. During the war, Munger's job was to analyze weather patterns, which involved predicting the weather. While preparing for his deployment, he took physics courses, learning to think like a physicist. Physicists focus on basic principles and are careful about their assumptions. Interestingly, this approach is quite similar to how Buffett and Munger think about business, where they also stick to fundamental principles and logical reasoning, a mindset that was reinforced during his military service. Post-war America offered Munger a chance to redefine his educational journey and his love life. He got married, and using the GL Bill, Munger didn't just follow the standard academic route, he pursued advanced courses across various universities. Despite not completing an undergraduate degree, he gained admission to Harvard Law School, thanks to an intervention by Roscoe Pound, a family friend and former dean of Harvard Law. Munger graduated magna cum laude in 1948. After he graduated, he was admitted to the California Bar in 1949. He began his career with a monthly salary of $275, which was considered above average at that time. Charlie Munger thought he was doing well in life, but he soon faced the toughest times. His marriage to his first wife, Margaret, ended. Then, his son Teddy was diagnosed with leukemia. Tragically, Teddy passed away. Munger spent all his savings on medical bills, as medical insurance wasn't common then. This left him at a turning point, wondering how things might have been different if he had enough money for better treatment. This experience made him even more determined to build real wealth for his family's sake. Munger understood that owning a business is key to becoming truly wealthy, as many rich people have their own businesses. While working for a transformer manufacturing company in Pasadena, Munger saw an opportunity to own part of the company. He invested all his savings and even borrowed money to buy into the company. However, the business faced early struggles. To save it, Munger had to reduce its size similar to what private equity firms do today. Buy a business, improve it, and sell it for profit. Although he considered this company not a great business, he still managed to earn a decent return. This experience taught him an important lesson for his future investments. It's easier to buy successful businesses than to try fixing failing ones. 
Munger was prepared to invest in great businesses, but he didn't expect his first million to come from real estate. Los Angeles was growing rapidly, with 3,000 people moving there each month. Munger saw this as a big chance to make money. Real estate involves using borrowed money to increase potential returns. While advising a client on a real estate project at Caltech, Munger invested his own money, owning half of the project. The Caltech property sold quickly, bringing in a 400% return on their $100,000 investment. Munger didn't stop there. He reinvested his earnings, into five more real estate projects. Munger grabbed a fantastic opportunity and made millions. This is common among millionaires and billionaires. They often start by taking big risks, but after earning their first million, they tend to invest more cautiously instead of speculating. Munger used his connections to start an investment company with a friend and a legal client. They bought a seat at a Pacific exchange and their main business was brokerage and market making. Market making involves creating a market for buyers and sellers to trade, especially when few are available, making the product hard to buy or sell, an illiquid market. The market maker earns money from the difference between buying and selling prices, the bid-ask spread, by facilitating transactions that increase market liquidity. Munger used the profits from this business to invest invest in other companies acting like a hedge fund manager. Taking control in blue chip stamps, the partnership that would forever alter the investment world and the destinies of Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett had its roots in an unlikely setting. Although they both hailed from the same town, Omaha, Nebraska, their paths never did cross until later in life, primarily because Munger was seven years older and was moving around in different social circles from Buffett. Their paths finally crossed in 1959 when Munger returned to Omaha following his father's death. They met at the dinner following the burial and immediately hit it off. Munger, already known for his sharp intellect, sensed a like-minded temperament in Buffett, and the sentiment was well replicated. Both were keenly aware of the market's inefficiencies and the pitfalls of investing. This meeting was the spark that ignited a lifelong friendship and a groundbreaking business collaboration. And so they became friends. The business partnership was to come much later. After the burial, Munger returned to his passion for investing, having completely transitioned from law to the financial markets. From 1962 to 1975, he ran his own investment partnership, Wheeler, Munger & Company, alongside Jack Wheeler, and successful he was. Munger's investment partnership generated compound annual returns of 19.8%. By comparison, the Dow average return rate for that period was 5%. However, after heavy losses of 32% in 1973 and 31% in 1975, Munger decided to quit while he was ahead and ended his investment firm. This decision led him to join forces with Buffett at Berkshire Hathaway in the mid-1970s, bringing his expertise as a lawyer and investment manager to the table. By 1978, Munger had risen to the role of vice chairman, a position he held until his passing in 2023. Over time, the two men reshaped Berkshire into the conglomerate it is today. They skillfully redirected profits from existing businesses to acquire new companies, such as Geico Insurance and BNSF Railway, while maintaining a high-profile stock portfolio, including significant investments in giants like Apple and Coca-Cola. Their partnership was characterized by an extraordinary synergy and a remarkable absence of conflict. Buffett, in a 2021 interview, reminisced about their six-decade friendship, noting that despite their different viewpoints, they rarely disagreed. Munger's approach complemented Buffett's. While the Oracle of Omaha liked diamonds in the rough, Munger focused on high-quality, undervalued assets, refining Berkshire Hathaway's investment style significantly. Buffett's early successes were heavily influenced by his former Columbia University professor, Ben Graham. Graham's strategy was straightforward yet effective. Identify undervalued companies trading below their asset value and capitalize on market corrections. This bargain-hunting approach laid the groundwork for Buffett's initial success. But Munger was different. He did not believe in holding many fair businesses. He believed in owning a few exceptional ones. To Charlie Munger, successful investing is simply a byproduct of a carefully organized and focused approach to life. Munger's style involved a comprehensive analysis of both the internal workings of the investment candidate as well as the larger integrated ecosystem in which it operates. He calls the tools he uses to conduct this review multiple mental models. Yes, the world-famous mental models. Finance professionals can't quite get enough of originated from Munger himself. Munger believed in preparation, patience, discipline, and objectivity as his most fundamental guiding principles. Like Buffett, 
Munger believed a successful investment career boils down to only a handful of decisions. His style was to make a very large bet and typically holds the position for a long period. To Munger, a portfolio of three companies is plenty of diversification. And when one looks at the conglomerate stocks Berkshire owns, it's hard to argue with the man. Accordingly, Charlie is willing to commit uncommonly high percentages of his investment capital to individual focused opportunities. With this approach, Charlie Munger, together with Buffett, grew the Berkshire Hathaway stock from less than $10 per share to over $546,869 today. Berkshire Hathaway's business is quite special today, owning a vast array of different companies and subsidiaries. Munger's approach has been key to their growth. However, there's no guarantee they will always outperform the S&P 500. Individual investors have an advantage over Berkshire in that their smaller investments can make a significant difference while Berkshire needs to focus on much larger stocks or companies. Buffett has acknowledged that beating the S&P 500 was easier back in the 60s and 70s, but it's been tougher in recent times. In the last five years, Berkshire Hathaway has performed slightly below expectations. Both Munger and Buffett value predictability in their investments, preferring companies whose futures they can foresee with confidence. Recently, they've broadened their investment horizons by including big names like Apple and Amazon. Charlie Munger advises that if you choose to invest in large cap stocks, you'll be competing with institutions that likely have done more thorough research than you. Throughout his long life, Munger has probably learned more lessons and gained more experiences than most. He approaches business like a theoretical physicist focusing on basic principles. He analyzes what will work, what won't, and the reasons why. Charlie Munger's legacy in the world of investment and at Berkshire Hathaway is monumental. He was not just an investment guru, but a philosopher, not just a thinker, but a doer. In a world full of fluff, he was one of the very few with real substance. His journey from Omaha to Wall Street legend is a masterclass in value investing and strategic thinking. His partnership with Warren Buffett formed one of the most successful business duos in history, shaping Berkshire Hathaway into a powerhouse of value investing. As we conclude, remember Munger's ethos, invest with patience, think long term, and always prioritize quality. Now it's time to embrace the wisdom of this legendary investor and make your mark. But before you embark on this journey, let's make a pact. Hit like. If Munger's story ignited a spark in you, drop a comment sharing your key takeaway, and subscribe to join a community hungry for stories on business, money, and power.